The 2015-16 Leicester squad achieved greatness by winning the Premier League. With Ranieri at the wheel and the likes of Vardy, Mares, Kante, they pulled off one of the biggest upsets ever in football. But sadly, in the 22-23 season, they were relegated down to the Championship. But don't you worry, they bounce straight back and will be in the Premier League next season. And that is exactly where we come in. We are taking over Leicester with Claudio Ranieri back at the wheel until we win a Premier League. It may take loads of seasons. It may only take one. But however long it takes, we are recreating the magic from 2015 16. It might include some of the old legends. You're going to have to wait and see. But if you guys are new here, make sure to hit subscribe, hit like, turn on notifications. Thank you so much for 1,000 subscribers. Comment down below what rebuild you want to see next. I'm not going to take up any more of your time. Let's get straight into the video. The starting squad isn't actually too bad at all. We've got some young, exciting talent like Fatwu and Doyle on the bench. But remember, this is a championship squad. They did just go up through the championship, but it's not quite Prem ready. So we're going to give them a chance to prove themselves. But a lot of business is definitely going to need to be done. Kieran Dewsbury, although, has, has to be sold. Obviously, he's going to Chelsea in real life. In this career, he's going to Brighton. It's for £23.5 million. Pounds. It's sad to see him go, but we've got to try and keep it as realistic with the sales as possible. And he's got in real life, so he's got in our career. The need for a midfielder has been answered, though, because Ungolo Kante is back in the Leicester side. It's so good to see him back. He's having an amazing Euros in real life. He did cost us almost £35 million, pounds, but because it's Kante, we've got to be paying that. Can't wait to see him back in a Leicester shirt, though. There's no positions which massively need improving over others. So what we're going to do is we're going to give them a pre-season to see who can impress us and earn their spot in the team. Pre-season was a real mix. Kante was definitely the shining star. So much so that I don't think we need Ndidi anymore. The challenges he was putting in was unbelievable. And the only other bright spark was Mavididi. He showed good bits of skill and a nice little finish. But all in all, a bit of a mediocre preseason. Indeed, he didn't do enough to make us think he's going to get minutes this season, especially with Kanti in the squad. So when we got offered 16 million from Man United, we have to accept it. We can invest that in some youth in the midfield. I think it's a deal that had to be done. Ndidi to Manchester United for £15.5 million. Pounds. All in all, not an awful pre-season, but there was two things we majorly struggled to do. So first, score goals. I think we're definitely going to need a winger or a striker to come into the squad before we get into the season. And the other one was the midfielder. I think we need at least two midfielders. And talking of midfielders, I have scouted these five. So we have Conor Gallagher. He's not the best on the ball, but he can press. And if we're doing a pressing style of play, then that's definitely going to suit us very nicely. So only 23. Papa Mata Saar. He is a baller. 20 years old. Is a bit better at holding, so maybe could fill in for Kante when he needs a rest because he is 32. Angle Gomez, I think, is locked on. We're going to try and sign him if possible because he's quite cheap. He's only 22 and 77 rated, so I think he could be a perfect midfielder for us. Got Fabian Ruiz, obviously balling at the minute in the Euros, so could be a perfect player to bring in midfield. And Thomas Lamar has a lot of experience, but still only 27 years old. Can play out wide as well. Could be a perfect sign-in. But before we make any sign-ins, I think we need to check out the academy because we have limited funds. So the academy could be a really good way to bring in some players without spending any money. The academy isn't looking too good, as you can see. It's limited options, but... He's only 15 years old, Ibrahim. So if we give him a bit more time, we can get him on some development plans. He could be one for the future, fingers crossed. And because the academy wasn't looking too good at the minute, we've just gone forward and signed Angel Gomez for only £14 million. That's right, Kante has another player to join him in midfield. Angel Gomez to Leicester for five years for only £14 million. With Gomez and Kante in this team, I really think we could be on something here. So obviously it's only season one, so it's a bit more of a developmental stage. But Gomez looks good, Kante looks good. I think we're a few players away from being ready for the season. And Saar has joined the team for £24 million from Tottenham. I think that's an absolute bargain. He's only 20 years old still and already 78 rated. Our midfield now looks extremely solid. We've got Kante... We've got Winks, we've got Gomez, and we've got Saar. I'm liking this midfield a lot, but our budget has taken a hit. We are only down to £9 million, so it might be time to try our luck with some loans. We have bought in Reese Williams from Liverpool for £1.5 million. We're low on the budget, so I'm to do sensible sign-ins. 
He's a lower rated centre back, but on the younger side, I think he's only around 23 years old. So he could just be a good rotation that could become good in the future. And we've got Eddie Unketia on loan with a future fee to sign him for £9 million. He may be starting up front and getting Vardy off the bench. He may just be used as a sub player. Either way, Nketiah on loan from Arsenal. I'm excited about this one. This is the finalised squad that we're going into the season with. It's a 4-3-3. Kante at the DM. Gomez at right centre mid. Nketiah up front. We've also got Reese Williams on the bench. We've got Doyle, Vardy, Dakar on the bench. The bench looks a lot more solid now. We've got Saar on the bench. We're going to keep, keep Winks in for now, but I'm sure he will work his way into that team for sure. But the squad is looking ready. The tactics, I'll give you a quick look now. We're going with Gagan Press. It's just reset for some reason. And we've got fast build up, direct passing. All of that is sorted. There's nothing else left to do, but get to January and see how we're doing. And just like that, we've made it to January. Time to see how we're doing. If you look at the top left right now, it seems to be like we're doing all right. But the league table will tell the full story. Let's jump over. Obviously, it's the FA Cup now, which is always a bit anticlimactic. We've got Luton in the first round. Well, our first round. It's round three. But in the Premier League, we're ninth. I think that's a very, very good start to the first season. I don't mind that at all. The, the top four is like a typical top four. So all the big six are in the top six, which is fine. Us in ninth place, though. That's a very, very good start to the season. Remember, this is only season one. Things are only going to improve, you'd hope. When the players get better, we bring in more players. I think that's a perfect start to the season. Eight wins, four draws, eight losses. That's not too bad at all. Time to check how the individual players have done, though. Angel Gomez has been a star. He's played every single game in the league and got nine goals, six assists. Eddie Nketiah as well, eight goals in 17 games. Fatawu, seven goals in 18. Mavididi's doing his bit as well. Kante, two goals, two assists in the league. I like what I'm seeing a lot here. The minutes are spread round so much. That's exactly what you want to be seeing. Look at that. Everyone is getting good minutes. Our squad is deep, but we don't have too many stars. And I think that's why this might just be working perfectly. Angol Gomez is definitely the player of the first half of the season, though. This is exciting stuff. And I almost don't want to waste more time. I want to just get straight into the second half of the season and see where we are at at the end of season one. We're not going to win the league, but we're definitely in the right step to doing that. A perfect start to the first half of season one, I'd say. The end of the season is upon us. It's time to check how we've done. It's not an awful last month and our manager rating is still good. So let's go over and have a look at the Premier League. And we finished exactly where we left ourselves in ninth place and I don't think that's too bad of a first season whatsoever. Arsenal won the league, then Spurs, City, United in top four. Us in ninth place, 15 wins, 12 draws, 11 losses. I don't think that's bad at all. Probably conceded a bit too many goals though for our liking but we didn't massively improve the defence this season. That's definitely next season's objective but all in all that's a very very good first season. Time to check the FA Cup. How do we do in that? The final is Arsenal City. That's interesting. And oh my god, we made it to the semi-finals where we lost 2-1 to Manchester City. And our other team that came up this season, Southampton, they also made it to the semi-finals. That's a very, very solid effort. Who did we beat to get there though? We beat Norwich. We beat Cambridge. We beat Brentford. And we beat uh, our first game, I think, Luton. It was indeed. That's a very, very impressive run. What about the Carabao Cup? Uh, Man City Arsenal was the final for that as well and Man City managed to win that one. Where did we go out? Oh no. This does not look good. We went out in the first round, well the second round, but our first round to Forest Green. Let's forget about that one though. Let's have a look quickly at some of the top goal scorers of the league before we check our own individual team stats. So as you can see there, Nketiah was our top goal scorer with 15 goals. But Haaland obviously won it, 25 and 26. Then Jesus and Watkins both got 24. Saka also for Arsenal got 22. That's a very, very tasty little top goal scorer. What about assists? We have two players on there, Gomez and Fatou, both with seven. That's lovely to see. Mukhtar for Villa won that. Clean sheets. I can't imagine we're going to be too high. Yeah, we're not even going to bother checking that one. But... That's very nice to see. Now time to check our individual stats. Obviously, like we saw, Nketiah was our top goal scorer. 15 in 31. 
That's a very good start to the season. And obviously, we are going to get him next year for £9 million. Fatu, 10 and 7, not bad. Gomez slowed down slightly, but still 11 goals, 7 assists in 37 games is very, very impressive. Mavadidi, 10 and 3 as well. Kante ended with 6 goals, 2 assists. And once again, the appearances were spread round. The goals and assists were spread round. It's a perfect season, I'd say. It's given everyone a good amount of development. But at the same time, a few stars have shone through. Like Nketiah, like Gomez. And that's really promising to see. But I think now we're going to have to have a look at the squad. Get to the new season and work out who we do want to keep. And who, more importantly, we want to be bringing in. Obviously, sadly though, Fatawu's loan has expired. Same with Callum Doyle. But look how many players we've got returning from loan. I like it a lot. It's time now to check out the squad and see what we're dealing with. In terms of the squad now, we have sadly lost Bardi. He has retired. Permanson's got up to 78. Sars got up to 80. Gomez is up to 80. Pereira's up to 80. And Kante has only dropped one to 84. It's a very good looking squad, but let's build what our strongest starting 11 is now with the few changes that have been made. So this is what I think our best starting 11 is, and I like it a lot. That midfield is so strong. And now with Sumare off the bench, Winks off the bench, we're looking trouble for other teams. So we have got 54 million pounds to spend. And as you can see there, we spent some money. Most of that was literally just making Nketiah permanent, which is absolutely massive. But £54 million for a centre-back and a right-winger. I like the sound of that very much. Let's have a look at who we're looking to bring in. These are the centre-backs we're looking to bring in. And I've identified Yoro and Baraldo as the two main ones. We have £50 million. And the sad thing is, Lukeba is going to cost about 35 of that, probably. But Yoro and Baraldo, we might be able to get for under 20 mil. What one am I going to sign, though? Let's cut to that right now. It had to be Lenny Yoro. Coming to Leicester for only £19 million. You heard that right. The 18-year-old who's already, what, I think 78 rated could be the difference maker this season. We finished ninth last year. Where can we finish this year? We have solved our right winger issue. Nonne Madueke has joined Leicester for around £27 million. We're doing all our business early doors. That's the two signings in the door. And we don't really have any money left. So, any more signs are only going to come if we manage to free up some budget somehow. And this is the team that we're starting the season with. It's much improved from last year. That back four looks way more solid now. That middle three is a joke with Samari and Winks off the bench. And that front three now looks really exciting. There's pace everywhere there. But there's nothing else left to do. We've used all our money up. So, let's get to January and fingers crossed... We're doing better than ninth because we want to see some progression. We have made it to January. I'm, I don't know how to feel. Obviously, we haven't played any games in January, so we can't even see if we've got a single win under our belt. But let's go and check the league. It is a league game, not an FA Cup. We're in 11th. Oh, no. We've been draw Chester City. Oh, my God. Eight draws already in 18 games. Basically, half our games have ended as a draw. And we're sat at 11th. I mean, I, I don't know how to really feel about that. There's not really much we can do in January either. We don't really have the money. I think we're going to have to check out the individual stats and see if that looks any more promising. Okay, so Daka has taken the reins this time with 9 goals in 14. Mavadidi, 7 in 18. Madueke, 5. Saar got 4. Gomez, 3 and 3. I mean, it's not bad, but it's not quite the numbers we were putting up last season. But I'm struggling to see why Nketia, he's played eight games and not scored a goal. Oh my god, he was so good. He was our top goal scorer with 15 last season. We signed him permanently. I can see now why Daka's getting minutes. And at least he's scoring the goals because otherwise we may be in trouble. Again, there's not much else left we can do. I've been getting to the end of the season. I hope we pick up some better form. We've now made it to the end of the season. If you look at the top left, it's not looking good at all. We only had one win in the last month as well. I can't say I'm feeling too confident about this. Oh, well, I feel like that's a bit harsh. We finished eighth. That's progression from last year. We were only, we were less than 10 points away from a top five finish. I don't think that's too bad at all. And if anything, that's giving me a hope that with a big window in the summer, we could maybe push and try and complete in three seasons. I'm not mean to look at that. But I don't think that's too bad in the league. The FA Cup... It was a Man City-Liverpool final this time. Uh, we lost in round five to Man City. That's not the end of the world at all. Let's have a look at who did end up going down, though. It was Coventry, Southampton and Burnley. So the fact that we're sat in eighth, 
while another team that came up at the same time as us have just gone down, I don't think it's really that bad. I think they're overreacting a little bit, if I'm being honest. But let's have a look at the overall stats of the team. So the individual stats did anyone manage to impress? Oh my god, Madueke managed to get 22 goals and 6 assists in 38 games. That is massively, massively impressive. Daka got 12 and 20 in 26, sorry. Mavadidi 11 and 3 in 38. And Ketia picked up a bit. He managed to get 8 in the second half of the season. Gomez 7 and 6. That's impressive. Saar 6 and 5 and dropped some good games. I, all in all, I don't think it's that bad of a season. We're going to need a big window. Maybe bring in a lot more people than we did in the, in the last summer. But I think we could push. I think we might full send it and go for Premier League level winners. So we're going to sign players, even if they're a bit older, that could come in for one season and maybe push us over the edge. Just get to the window though and see what players we can bring in. I have no idea what has just happened though. We've just started the new season. I was just going through the squad, looking at who's left, looking at who we've still got. And we've received a message straight away without sim in a day saying contract termination. We've been sacked on the first day, the 2nd of July of 2020. I think it'll be five or six on our third season when I'm just about to start scouting players and all of that. We've been sacked. How could you not sack us during the season, but you sack us two months or whatever it is after we finish playing? This is absolutely stupid. I don't get why FIFA have done this, and I can't even recover it because I saved it at the end of the season, so there's nothing I can do to, to change what I've done. I haven't done anything to get sacked. The board-like uh, reputation thing was so low for no reason. We just came eighth in the Premier League. I kept up with all my objective as well as I could. But they've clearly set some this season. And because I haven't done them on the first day, I just haven't completed it. That's so... Oh, they're so annoying. It's the first challenge I've ever not completed. And it's just the typical FC24 glitch of getting sacked because of absolutely nothing. So sadly, this has to go down as a failure. But if you guys want it, let me know down below. And I can definitely, definitely give this one another go in a part two. And maybe I'll, I'll transfer some of the players like Madueke already to Leicester so we have them from the start. So we can continue from where we got to. But sadly, this career has just been lost. All because we've been sacked for nothing. But that is annoyingly where we're going to have to leave it for this video. If you have enjoyed, make sure to hit like, hit subscribe, turn notifications and comment. Do you want me to re-attempt this? And I'll make sure to pay way more attention to the objectives. I thought the performances on the pitch were speaking for themselves. But I guess clearly not. Thanks for watching if you have made it this far. And let me know, does this keep happening to you as well? But until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.